<laughs> How many of you have a profile on LinkedIn? I can't imagine that you would. Okay. You mean I'm supposed to have one? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyway, um, I know this is going to be fun and entertaining, and so take it away, Mel. Credible, professional, approachable. These three words, as business owners, you know the value of being perceived as credible, professional, and accessible. What those three words mean to you in your industry may be different than what they mean to me in my industry or to Ron in his industry. But what LinkedIn does is it levels the playing field. It sets a standard of what is acceptable and expected across all industries. I made two assumptions when putting this presentation together. First, that you actually have a LinkedIn profile. And two, that in some way, shape, or form, you are using LinkedIn to grow your business. With that in mind, over the next 12 minutes or so, we're going to accomplish two goals. We're going to be looking at the quality of your connections and the secret value in leveraging LinkedIn groups. Getting connections on LinkedIn is easy. It is so easy. It's perhaps too easy. But if it's so easy, why is it so hard to get in front of the people that can hire you? Why? Let me ask you a question. Have you taken the time to develop criteria for why you will or will not connect with someone on LinkedIn? Let's keep that in mind. What you determine as criteria will help you decide what is value, who is going to be valuable in growing your business, and who maybe you should connect with them on another platform maybe not LinkedIn right now. Let's look at the, the connection spectrum. On one end, we have connection collectors. <laughs> Their top priority is, can I have more connections than you? Can I have more connections than you? Can I have more connections than everybody else in this room? And then on the other end of the spectrum, we have those that choose to only connect with people who they've met in person. That's great. This group over here actually knows everybody they're connected to. But they're missing a key element. They're missing the key pur purpose of social media. Social media levels the playing field. It allows you to brand your small business in a big way by giving you access to people that you otherwise may not have had access to. That's the purpose of social media. So where on this spectrum do you fall? When you establish your criteria, you're going to figure that out. And from there, you will be able to choose what connections and what people it's of value for you to connect with and what connections maybe you should click the ignore button. <laughs> so let's talk about that. When you receive a connection request from somebody that you do not know, you've never met them in person, and you've never engaged with them on social media, on any platform whatsoever, what do you do? Delete. Delete them. <laughs> Deleting is not an option. You can ignore them, or you can connect with them. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> you mean when I hit the delete on their email request, that doesn't go away? Not on LinkedIn, no. You have to actually go to LinkedIn to do that. <laughs> I don't. I check it out a little bit more first. Okay, because uh, some people know me from groups. I don't know them, but I've shown up on groups, and so I check them out a little bit more. And if I see they're in a group that I'm active in, and they're in my field of uh, target, then I probably will accept them. We're going to go into that in just a minute but that is a great answer. Yes, you can, like Brian said, you can click ignore and they will never know. That is the great thing about social media. You can choose to ignore anybody you want and they will never know. 
<laughs> in their mind, they think you just haven't checked your inbox yet. That's it. That's it. Yeah. That's what they think. <laughs> On the other end, you can do exactly like Fran just said. You can look into it a little further. You can respond to them without actually accepting the connection. And when you respond to them, include a message something like this. Hi Janelle, thank you for reaching out to me. I am happy to connect with you. May I ask how you heard about me and why you are interested in connecting? This does one of two things. One, it immediately weeds out the connection collectors. Because 99% of the time, they won't write back to you. <laughs> they won't. They don't care. They only want the number. If they do respond, I guarantee you their response will be something along the lines of, well, I saw your profile and I want to connect. Or I saw you're in this industry and I want to connect. <clears throat> Great. I'm not interested in connecting to connection collectors. For me, if I'm connected to you, I want to know that I can pick up the phone and call you. That I can send you a message on LinkedIn and you're going to get back to me in a reasonable amount of time. That is my criteria for connecting with people on LinkedIn. So you do this before you accept them? Yes. I didn't know you could do that. Yes. Yeah. Yes, there is a little drop down box. If you go into LinkedIn, uh, next to the accept button that says reply do not accept and that is where you type this message and you give them about a week to ten days because you never know everybody gets busy if they don't respond in that amount of time like they ignore and magically they go away it's great I'm having trouble understanding why I would ever make it hard for a chief lending officer I feel to connect with those aren't the ones. Well, no, you, you said you check them out, and I'm saying, no, I well, no, wait, we didn't get to the checkout part yet. Right. We're just saying a generic person has said, I want to connect with you. I've not specified industry, I've only specified that they do not know you. Okay, that's not what I thought you said. Okay, yeah. I thought you said that the far end of it was We're to actually check them out, right and I think the idea. far end of it is they're a perfect fit, and I would not. We're getting right into that in a second. Sorry. The, second, the <laughs> second element that this does is it establishes a basis for you to build a relationship. You only get one chance to make a first impression. Whether your first impression is on LinkedIn, Twitter, in person, at a networking function, or when you walk in your client's door, it doesn't matter. You get one chance for that first impression. This first impression or something similar allows you to set the standard that I actually want to engage with you. I actually want to talk to you. Is that okay? That's what this does. Now let's turn the tables. Let's say you want to connect with somebody. What is your criteria for choosing to connect with somebody? There's any number of reasons why you could possibly connect with somebody. <laughs> In my personal opinion, some of them are more valid than others. But that is based on my personal criteria for choosing to connect with somebody on LinkedIn. But all of these are perfectly acceptable, depending on your criteria. Now when you reach out to that lender that you want to hire you, how do you go about doing that? If you send that connection request with your sales pitch, nine chances out of ten, they're not going to accept. If you send that connection request telling them that you want to connect so you can pitch them, nine chances out of ten, they're not going to connect. Honesty doesn't pay. No, honesty does not pay. So the approach that you take with that is that is where you spend the two minutes to do a little bit of research. Look for an article that was written about them. Look for an article that they wrote. Look for an article about the company they work for or an organization that they belong to. And then you send them a message similar to this. Hi Jenny, 
in doing research for an article that I'm writing about, insert whatever your professional topic is, I came across your article, insert their title because you have to flatter them. I came, uh, we just read that one. When I looked you up on LinkedIn, I noticed that we have a few groups in common as well. That is the secret element of how you can get your prospects to connect with you. <coughs> Before you're sending this message, go to LinkedIn, look at their profile, and you will be able to see what groups they belong to. Go join one or two of them. Don't worry, you don't have to stay involved in these groups. You're only creating a basis of commonality for you to send this message and for them to click accept. Once they've accepted, then you can work your magic. This states that you want to build a relationship, not that you're going to pitch them. Remember, social media, there's a keyword in there called social. It's meant to be social, it's meant to be engaging. You can use LinkedIn as a tool to brand your small business in a big way. Next element, LinkedIn groups. We talked a little bit about LinkedIn groups, and we're gonna talk a little bit more. The value of participating in LinkedIn groups. Yes, LinkedIn is a very complicated tool, has a whole lot of features, and can be very, very time consuming. So how do you do it in a way that is beneficial to you, both online and off, and to your pocketbook, since that's why we're all in business, is to get paid. LinkedIn offers two types of groups, a members-only group and an open group. Members-only is just that. Only members of that group belong in that group. It is not searchable by search engines, and it is not accessible to anybody outside of that group. The value in that is it becomes a private, safe environment. Then you also have open groups. Open groups are open to the general public. You, you may still have to apply to get accepted, but usually it happens within an hour or a day. The hidden value in open groups is search engines. Bing, <coughs> Yahoo, Google can all search LinkedIn groups and find out what you are talking about. Your activity on social media bursts, boosts your search engine <laughs> optimization. Bursts <laughs> It does, it bursts it. <laughs> We're all striving for SEO improvement. We want to be at the top of the page. We want to appear at the top of Google, the top of Bing, whatever search engine is of your choice. We want to appear at the top of that. The way to move up is by getting involved in social media. Your SMO, which is your social media optimization, boosts your SEO, your search engine optimization. <laughs> you want to raise that? Get involved in LinkedIn. LinkedIn is the perfect platform because you're using your keywords, your buzzwords, and it directly attaches you to those keywords, to your company, and to all of your online profiles. One other thing I forgot to mention about connecting to somebody. If there was one message that you should not use under any circumstances in a connection request, do you want to know what that is? Yes. I'm a stalker. <laughs> that would be number two. <laughs> the number one response you should not use is, because you are a person that I trust, I want to connect with you on LinkedIn. <laughs> really? <laughs> Seriously? It's social media. It levels the playing field. It's not a status symbol. It's the equivalent of saying, oh my god, Mike, you have a phone. Can I give you my number? Really? <laughs> yeah! Do I get dinner? <laughs> At least? That's what well, no, my phone number. I got a phone, too. Wow. That's what it says. In closing, three ways to leverage LinkedIn to grow your business. Be credible. Offer to start a conversation with somebody that you don't know. Being on social media is about being social. Being on LinkedIn is about being social with prospects that can potentially hire you. Be professional. When you request to make a connection to somebody that you do or do not know, make it about them. Basic Sales 101, why would they want to connect with you? Add value up front. 
and most importantly, be accessible. Get involved in LinkedIn groups, boost your SEO, boost your credibility, make it easy for your clients to find you.